Now remember the women of Shine Bagh calling for a Bharat Band on the 29th. This comes against the backdrop of a meeting they held with Delhi's Lieutenant Governor earlier today. An eight-member delegation met the LG and agreed to allow the passage of school buses but refused to call off the stir. Remember the road connecting Delhi and Noida has been shut now for 36 days as women continue their protest against the Citizenship Amendment Act. The women have also been sent a defamation notice to BJP's Amit Malviya after he shared a video accusing the protesters of taking money to continue their stir. So that's what we are hearing from Shaheen Bagh. As I said, there are reports coming in of a Bharat Band now being called by the protesters at Shaheen Bagh. Let's go to my first guest this evening, the Lieutenant Governor, former Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, Najib Jang, who's come out strongly against the Citizenship Act. He was also in Jamia yesterday. He is a former Vice Chancellor of Jamia as well. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Mr. Jang. The big question that I'm going to raise is starting off, you are among those who is now calling for a dialogue between the government and the protesters. But how does one call for a dialogue when there seems to be no meeting ground? Amit Shah has made it very clear today, there's no turning back on the CAA. The protesters are saying we are going in for a Bharat Band. What's the middle ground you see? I, I really don't know. I mean, it's really up to the government to make uh, to call these people and have a chat with them because this can't simply go on you can't have uh, agitations across the country you can't have people sitting on the roads you can't have a situation like a Bharat Band and the government refusing to speak to them this is not acceptable I mean there has to be an invite I am not saying that the government should talk to political parties if that causes an embarrassment to them. But certainly the, some of the leaders of these agitations should be called and spoken to. This is, I mean, saying that there is no middle ground is, is just not possible. We can't let the country slip into chaos. No, the, the, it's not about slipping into chaos, uh, uh, Mr. Jung. There is a need for at least some kind of basic agreement on the need for a dialogue at the moment the protesters are upping the ants and is saying they are going to go for no turning back on citizenship amendment act you tell me what is that middle ground that you see i heard you in jamia yesterday suggesting that you believe that the act itself should be amended so that all minorities are included within the definition of those who are religiously persecuted. Do you really believe that's a workable formula given the tough stand that the Modi government has taken? I think it's a very simple solution. The CAA as it stands today, to my mind, is not constitutional. And therefore, it is only sensible to have two approaches to this. A, that you include the others that you have excluded or remove all names. I mean, I see no point in being cussed over this and letting this, this drag on. There is no other solution. Uh, I also think, I mean, apart from the CAA, that there is concern now about the NPR. I mean, you are asking people uh, to prove their lineage, their parentage, uh, people coming from Pakistan, for instance. I, I have Dozens of friends uh, who have come in from the Punjab, our former prime ministers, Manmohan Singh and Indra Kumar Gujral came from Pakistan. Now, are they going to prove where their fathers came from? Their fathers died decades ago. So this is creating an existential question in the Muslim mind, as well as an issue where non-Muslims will have to bribe their way heavily through petty bureaucracy is going to be an expensive, chaotic exercise which will go on for years. It is not practical. It is creating consternation in everyone's mind. Even those who support the CAA feel that this is not the opportune time to go with it. We need to, we need to get our act together and bring communities together. How do, you this, how do you respond to those? If there is an impression how, that, yes, that go ahead. in the Muslim mind. Yes, go ahead. Please complete. No, if there is a, 
if there is a question uh, in the Muslim mind, then that has to be removed. The Honorable Prime Minister invoked Swami Vivekananda in Calcutta. Well, Swamiji said that I want that he would prefer a Vedantic mind and an Islamic body in India. He said, I belong to a great religion that believes in all true religions. So we have to not single out any community in India. There are 250 million Muslims. There are many, many Christians. This consternation from their mind must be removed. But there is a sense, Mr. Jung, that this entire protest has become now high, has been hijacked in parts of the country by politicians that it is now about it is now not anti ca but anti modi shah do you sense that that this protest you've got a lot of children coming into the protest they are there is slogan hearing against narendra modi and amit shah do you believe that somewhere down the line this protest from being against the uh, anger against the police in jamia against the manner in which uh, the police entered uh, the library there has now completely become against Shah and Modi. I don't think that this is a protest against Mr. Modi or Mr. Shah. This, this is a protest by citizens of India who are concerned at, at how this process is going to be played out and the doubts must be removed. The impression that there are politicians behind this, I don't think it is correct. Please see Gita Colony. I am not talking of Shine Bag. Shine Bag has become a symbol. But travel to Gita Colony where thousands of women are sitting. Go to Mustafabad where there are thousands of women sitting. These are not backed by politicians. They don't care for politicians. I mean, the politicians might be going there because daily elections are close. But these people are not listening to politicians. The students are hurt. They are hurt emotionally at the way they have been treated. They were treated very badly in uh, Jamia. They were treated awfully in uh, Aligarh. They were treated mercilessly in JNU. They are hurt and they are joining in. So the, the, the so-called impression that this is against the prime minister or uh, the home minister, I don't think that is entirely correct. That's a side act that they get dragged into it. The consternation is the question of an existential existence for minorities in India where they feel that they are not being treated rightly. But Mr. The Jung fear must be, uh, must be taken out of their minds because it is not good enough. But there is a sense that yes. some of these fears may be irrational, that some of these fears are being preyed upon by opponents of the government. And as you yourself seem to admit, somewhere down the line, these protests have become about minority fears. It is being projected now as a Muslim protest. How do you respond to that? No, I think that Muslims are there in larger numbers, but then they are also the people who are going to be affected mainly. Having said that, a large number of non-Muslims are part of it. Uh, uh, as you know that uh, 106 civil servants have written a letter to the citizens of India about this. I am part of that group. In that entire group of 106, there are only four Muslims. So let's look at the statistics that, of course, the larger number are Muslims who are, who, are, who are concerned. But I have across the board people I know who are thinking that this is ill-timed, that this is not proper, and we should not pursue it in the way we are, or we should amend it. This is the time to amend it. We can do it very amicably. My final question, do you believe, though, that the way out is a Bharat Band? Is the way out to virtually bring cities to a halt or try and do that? Will this not only further widen, some believe, the polar polarization that's taking place in society? That the, the, there has to be perhaps another way out, which comes only through dialogue. Yes. Or through a court order. Yes, it can only happen through dialogue. Bharat Band is the worst possible. I wish... I wish the Honorable Supreme Court who had intervened in time. Uh, giving such a long date is not the best of ideas. Uh, they could have intervened before. They are coming up tomorrow. The date is coming up tomorrow. They can intervene and come up with an interim order even before the 29th. Because we need peace in the interim till things thrash themselves out. 
This is very important. We cannot let India slip into this. 29th is not far away, but one week is enough for the government to call these people for a dialogue. Okay, Lieutenant Governor, former Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung making an appeal to the government to call the protesters for a dialogue now to end the standoff. I appreciate your joining me here at the top of the news today.